We're in the little projects corner in the living room, messing with batteries. Tim got sent me a 12 volt, 12 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery by my request. I actually requested this for a different project. It was actually going to be for an LED light system and a stairwell, but it might end up being there in the, in the future, but that's gonna take a little lot longer because I have to figure out a way to make some uh, light sensing weatherproof uh, LED turn on -y things to turn the lights on when the sun goes down. And that's a little bit difficult to make one that's really weatherproof, at least in the time frame that they would want me to make a video. So instead, in Illinois, I happened to get this UPS from my workshop, and we had taken the batteries out of it, the lead acid six volt batteries, and this definitely does not fit in the UPS but you kind of need a little bit of an oversized lithium iron phosphate battery to do, to do the same as a lead acid battery. I happen to be sick at the moment, so I'm kind of stuck at home. And I was like, you know what? This is a perfect time to mess with this. Now, looking in the manual, you see that it does suggest 150 watts as the peak output of the battery. This UPS does 300 watts, and I'm curious how well it'll do. Another reason why I filmed some clips disjointed over a month that didn't really amount to a whole video is because I didn't know if that power supply would overcharge the battery and if the BMS wouldn't play very well. But it turns out it actually works out really well. It tends to stop the charge around 13.5 volts. I've just been doing some more experimenting so the voltage is lower. Now, right now we have it connected up to my computer and running the TV. The power being pulled from the TV and the computer is about 90 watts. Now let's check the voltage dip as I unplug it. Pretty good. Now previously, a month ago, I was running this off of my inverter and this actually acts as a good way for me to switch out my computer from inverter power to wall power. So that's pretty cool. I do worry about how much power this UPS uh, uses. Is if, if it uses like 10 watts, that's not gonna be very good because I might as well just turn off my computer and plug it in. Now the question is, can this 12 amp hour battery actually provide the full 300 watts or closer to it that this UPS needs? In order to test that, I think I'm going to have to open up the uh, Final Fantasy XIV benchmark. It's about 240. Let's see. Does it give out? Oh. Ooh, it starts. I mean, it didn't go out, but ooh, that, that started flickering that light real bad. Okay, so that's about the maximum power, I think. Yeah. It did survive it, but that did not like how low that voltage went. So this might not be super useful for, for that. Now, this is a benchmark. So that means that whenever I'm rendering video or I'm doing a benchmark, it won't fully run. But how about whenever we're just logged into the game? I decided to load up Planet Crafter, and it's interesting. When I first loaded it up, it was refusing to initialize my GPU very much, and it was running on the, on the lowest settings. So I kind of wonder if, if those power flickerings, if it messes with my GPU a little bit. But now we're down to 185 watts. Oh. Froze the game. Yeah. Froze the computer too. So my computer does not like that square si that, that that square wave that's produced by this UPS. Oh, I just realized that was my multimeter that did the other beeping. Because it, it, it beeps after like five minutes. An incredibly short time. 
Never mind. That really confused me. Let's try 175 watts. Pulling out now. Running Planet Crafter. Actually, I'm going to go a wide angle. So it can run it. Looks like 175 is about the maximum. Okay, that's doable. I don't know how Final Fantasy 14 will do after the graphics update, but I can definitely run off 175 watts. Well, firstly, I could just not have the TV console connected to it. So it looks like the maximum recommended amount is pretty accurate at 150 watts. You can take more. You can take considerably, considerably more, but you'll get a voltage drop. That does make me feel better because that means that the BMS doesn't cut out. It will give it. It just drops the voltage quite a bit. So this can be good for like 150 watts of power, maybe 175 watts of power. Now I'm curious. I kind of want to open up this battery and see if it could flat pack into this UPS. I used a soldering iron to start a little bit of an indentation, and then I used my screwdrivers to continue around that. I find it interesting that all this plastic is black that's painted. Interesting. Interesting. So, oh, hmm. this was quite a pain to get out. It's still kind of stuck in there. I don't really know why. Huh. Is it just suction or is it foam against that? I don't know. Interesting, interesting. I like this. I like this design a lot, Tim Gott. I believe Tim Gott is the same manufacturer as Vatcher Power as well. You know, this is a pretty densely packed little battery. I do like the style. It's really hard to reform though. So I'm trying to get this off and the adhesive they use is pretty much never going to come off. I finally got the part I had to pick at it. Yeah. Okay, so I have it kind of butterflied open now, and I can see how it's wired. So we do have four series, four parallel. Okay, now I have some light bulbs. I'm going to discharge test it real quick. They tell you about one amp each. Just gonna run that down a little bit. And boy, these are hot. Whew. I really don't feel like messing with stuff today because I'm sick. Kind of turned that point where I don't feel like it, but this is pretty cool. I've taken the battery and I've soldered this lead onto it. Now I can hook it up to my fan to discharge it a little bit before I really cut it apart. I don't want to mess with batteries that are fully charged after all. I'm going to be running this battery down using my fan because got to say, I just feel easily tired because I'm sick right now. Even taking that battery apart, it's just like, oh, it was getting overheated. So I'm going to let it run that battery down. And uh, I think it's like five watts there not too bad i realized i use the same connector there goes standardization to run these fans so i have this running five fans today and now it's down to 12.24 12.23 volts that's like five percent charge 
We have chewed up most of that battery and I left it running that, that double fan all night. So that's also how I got some of the power down. Now, I have the way to take this apart as well. As you may have noticed, I finally got my uh, new soldering station out of the car. I had bought this back in 2021 or so, but I never really did much with it. And then I moved to Philadelphia, so it's pretty much brand new. We went to Illinois last month and I brought it back out. It took me a little bit to take it out though. I'm going to just insert my little pair of scissors and snip these and then take them out of their packages. It didn't take long. And now this, oh, let's see. Let's see. And then I get my choice of which tab I think is how on the stiffest. So I'm well along the way in reconfiguring this battery into a flat pack. It's a bit of a pain. I hate building battery packs, especially because I don't have the money to buy a spot welder. I don't recommend soldering to the batteries, but I will say I am soldering to the tabs that are soldered, uh, that are welded to the batteries. I can't afford a battery welder, so this is all I can do, but if you actually plan to do this, maybe get a welder. I just, I don't have the money to buy one. I'm in extreme poverty and I am not going to be able to have a very easy time with this. So soldering it is. Well guys, I got it together and I'm not very happy with it. <laughs> and then I realized, <laughs> look at this, <laughs> it does not fit. The accrued differences have made it way too big. So these are now cells to experiment with. Gosh, okay. Well, live and learn and learn from my mistakes. This 12 amp power battery would have worked for this, but I wasn't able to fit this easily into that spot. So I guess now I know. Don't try to take apart a 12 amp hour battery and try to fit it in there. But you probably shouldn't do any of the stuff that I've done in this video anyway. This is a bit of a mad sciencey as it is. Still though, it was a lot of fun. Thank you very much, Tim Gott, for sending me this. And it was a lot of fun to get to see the build quality and all that, which I actually do like the build quality of this a lot. Now, to take this apart, if I don't want to use it as a flat pack, I can just kind of rip it apart. However, I might just build a case for this and turn it into a uh, portable battery pack. That could be cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm, a little, I'm really tired of this. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.